And new numbers are out today that show San Diego County will remain in the red tier of the state's coronavirus monitoring system for another week. County Supervisor Nathan Fletcher joins us live with more on how things are going. Nathan, nice to see you, sir. Good to see you, Kathleen. Thanks uh, for having me. Uh, great to see you as always. Well, looking at the latest numbers from the state, how would you say the county is doing overall? How would you gauge it? Well, we're doing okay. I mean, I, I guess the good news is the situation is not getting significantly worse. Uh, you know, we are living on this precipice each week of are we going to tip into the higher tier or not? Uh, numbers have been inching up a little bit because of our testing. We've had the adjustment factor. Uh, but where we'd really like to be is having a conversation that said, are we close to descending to the next tier uh, or at least living comfortably where we are? And so while I think the overwhelming majority of San Diegans are doing incredible work, adapting to using a mask, figuring out their way of life and avoiding large indoor settings. Uh, you know, we certainly have a segment that, that is still uh, not fully on board with that. And, and we'd really like to tighten that up so we can descend a little bit. So we alleviate the, the stress and anxiety each, each week of are we going to tip higher or not? Well, let's address the state's monitoring system because during today's Board of Supervisors meeting, uh, unanimously you and your colleagues talked about asking the state to include hospital capacity in the reopening blueprint. So explain to our viewers why that metric is of value and, and what it means. Yeah, the, the measure today was just simply the board saying we're gonna support our public health officer uh, and all of her efforts. Uh, Dr. Wooten has outlined multiple times why basing it solely on hospitalizations is not a good idea because by the time you see significant increases in hospitalizations, it's too late to do anything about it. Uh, there's often a lag of, uh, could be up to three weeks uh, from someone's hospitalized from when they got it. And so we really do have to focus on case counts uh, and percentage of positives. Uh, our hospitalization numbers remain very stable uh, and, and, and they, we've done a really good job. And what's changed from earlier in the year was earlier in the year was primarily older folks with more underlying health conditions who were getting positive. Now we're having a younger generation get positive. And so they, it's not having the same impact on our hospital system. And so I think it's okay to consider that but we can't base it entirely on hospitalizations. And so, you know, what we need to do is slow the spread. And, and if we slow the spread, then we're gonna have the ability to get more things open uh, and move forward while we wait for that vaccine or therapeutic treatment. Well, that brings us to the school issue. You probably heard in your ear our last report, people protesting yep. up in, in Carlsbad, very passionate about getting kids back in school. San Diego's largest school district, San Diego Unified, returned to in-person classes to some degree today. But some parents say reopening, the reopening process itself isn't moving quickly enough. So where, where are we at there? What is the county doing? Because everybody's very passionate on both sides of the debate. How are you bridging that gap? Well, I've worked really hard. You know, my office initiated millions of dollars of support for our schools, for testing, uh, for teachers. Early, we worked with Grady Children's Hospital to make testing for every, every child available. Uh, we put millions of dollars towards Wi-Fi, and I talked to uh, Dr. Gothold, the County Superintendent of Public Instruction, uh, weekly in terms of what we can do to support them. And then just as a parent, you know, three of our kids are still school age, and they're all doing remote, and I know how difficult it is. And I think we have to equip the schools with everything we can to allow them to safely reopen. Um, and I feel, really feel that it ought to be primarily based for those kids who distance learning simply isn't an option. Uh, maybe they don't have a home environment where it's allowable, they don't have access to technology. Certainly our kids with special needs who need that in-person instruction. Uh, but I think that we wanna all get back to kids going to school, but we've gotta do it safely uh, and we've gotta do it responsibly. And so it's a difficult situation. You know, The schools are faced with a challenging situation and parents are rightfully frustrated and so I'm going to continue to push uh, to support our schools to make sure from a public health standpoint, they have all the tools they need around testing and contact tracing uh, and all the public health information. And then I think, you know, we have to accept that different districts are going to move at a little bit different speed. Uh, but I think everyone's trying to get through a difficult situation in the safest possible way. Well, let's talk about student athletes then. Um, there's a lot of parents who are pushing to get their kids back on the field as well. What are your thoughts yeah. on that? Well, right now we have a situation where kids can obviously go to practice and they can do scrimmages. Uh, I know that there's a lot of parents who want the competitions and the tournaments back, uh, and I think that we will get there. The, the concern is, again, you know, that where we started our conversation is we, our cases are not declining in San Diego County. Uh, they're increasing ever slightly, but they're not declining. We're on the precipice of going to a higher tier and having additional closures. And so it's hard in that environment to say we need to add all of these new gatherings uh, to the situation we face. And games turn into tournaments, and tournaments turn into a lot of people uh, in hotel rooms or in RVs and certainly gatherings. And so, 
you know, again, you know, our kids play sports and right now they're just practicing. We want to get back to that competitive environment, uh, but we've got to do it at the right time uh, and in the right way. And I think the focus right now needs to be on slowing the spread, getting our schools open and protecting our small businesses. Uh, and then we can reintegrate some of these other things that are very important uh, when, when, when it's appropriate. All right, Supervisor Fletcher, thank you for your time tonight. Thanks, Kathleen.